In this lesson, you will learn a fast way to calculate combinations like these in your head. Now to set things up, consider this question. Here, we want to find the number of ways to select three pizza toppings from eight pizza toppings. Now in an earlier lesson, we learned that we can use combinations in these instances. So since we have eight items all together and we want to select three of them, we can accomplish this in eight choose three ways. Now all we need to do is evaluate 8 choose 3. One option here is to apply the conventional formula for calculating combinations. But this is too much work. Instead, we can use this rule that says the combination n choose r is equal to the first r values of n factorial divided by r factorial. Now I'll show you why this shortcut works in a moment. For the time being, however, let's see how the technique works. So in this question, we're choosing three items out of eight. So the numerator will be the first three values of eight factorial, that is eight times seven times six, and the denominator will be three factorial, which is three times two times one. Now to speed up our calculations here, notice that the denominator evaluates to be six, and here in the numerator we have a six. So we can cancel these out, leaving us with 8 times 7, which equals 56. So we can select 3 items from 8 items in 56 ways, which means the correct answer here is D. Now as you can see, in most cases we can perform these calculations in our head. Let's try some more. Let's say we want to find the number of ways to select 2 items from a group of 10 items. Now, if the order of the selected items does not matter, then we can accomplish this in 10 choose 2 ways. To quickly evaluate 10 choose 2, we'll apply the shortcut. So the numerator will be the first two values of 10 factorial, and the denominator will be 2 factorial. Here we can speed up our calculations by first recognizing that 10 divided by 2 times 1 simplifies to be 5. And from here, 5 times 9 equals 45. So 10 choose 2 equals 45. Let's try two more. To evaluate 6 choose 3, the numerator will be the first three values of 6 factorial, and the denominator will be 3 factorial. Here, the denominator evaluates to be 6, and we have a 6 in the numerator. So we can cancel these out, leaving us with 5 times 4, which equals 20. Now it's your turn to try this one. I'll give you 5 seconds to evaluate 20 choose 2 in your head. Alright, we'll apply this shortcut to see that the numerator is equal to the first two values of 20 factorial and the denominator will be 2 factorial. From here, we can speed up our calculations by first recognizing that 20 divided by 2 times 1 simplifies to be 10, and from here, 10 times 19 equals 190. So 20 choose 2 equals 190. Okay, now that you know how the shortcut works, let's see why it works. To do this, let's call up our conventional formula for calculating combinations and use it to evaluate 8 choose 3. So here n equals 8 and r equals 3. So when we plug these values into the formula, we get the following. Our next step is to simplify 8 minus 3, which equals 5. From here, we'll expand the factorials, at which point we can cancel out some of the numbers in the numerator and the denominator. When we cancel out the 5s, 4s, 3s, 2s, and 1s, from the top and bottom, we get the following. Now notice that by applying the conventional formula and then simplifying, our fraction now conforms to our shortcut. In the numerator we have the first three terms of 8 factorial and in the denominator we have 3 factorial. So this demonstration should give you a good idea about why our shortcut works. Now before we conclude this lesson, we need to examine a special case. Consider what happens if we have a combination question where we have n objects and we want to choose zero of them. 
for example. Let's say that we have eight employees and we must choose zero of them to be on a committee. In how many ways can we do this? Well, in this instance, we need to evaluate eight choose zero. But if we use our shortcut, we'll run into a problem. When we apply our rule, we see that the numerator must be the first zero values of eight factorial. But what does this equal? So it appears that we have a problem when we want to choose zero items. Fortunately, there are a few ways we can deal with this special case. One way is to just give you a nice simple rule that says n choose zero always equals one. Now this should make sense to us if we think about what it means to choose zero items from a group of n items. For example, if we have eight employees and want to select zero of them to be on a committee, then there's only one way to accomplish this task. Nobody gets to be on the committee. Now if that explanation doesn't work for you, let's evaluate eight choose zero using the conventional formula. So we'll replace n and r with eight and zero to get the following and then we'll simplify to get this. Now in an earlier lesson, we learned that zero factorial equals one. So at this point, we can see that the numerator and the denominator are equal, which means all of this simplifies to be one. So as you can see, since n choose zero will always equal one, there's really no need to apply any formulas for this special case. All right, that concludes this lesson on a quick way to calculate combinations. Be sure to practice this technique so that you can save time on test day.